This time I'm gonna show you how to knit a pocket scarf all in one piece. Hey, it's Denise from Lumahead.com. For more information and a complete list of supplies, be sure to visit the website at Lumahead.com forward slash pocket dash scarf. All right guys, let's begin a little different this time. I'm gonna be using a large gauge 36 peg loom and I'm gonna be marking 26 pegs. So you guys are always asking me about my marker placement and I'm using these little rubber bands because it allows me to stretch two pegs, leave two pegs empty and two pegs marked. All right, again, it's a total of 26 pegs that we are going to cast on. So I'm taking a single strand of chunky number five yarn and I'm gonna secure it to the anchor peg using a simple knot. You can use a slip knot if you're more comfortable and the direction doesn't matter. I'm going from left to right and I'm gonna wrap all of my 26 pegs. Now, this is the cast on I'm using. You could use whatever cast on you're comfortable with. It could be the crochet cast on, the chain cast on, whatever you feel comfortable using for a rib stitch pattern. Remember this is the top of the pocket and it is a double rib stitch. All right, so once I wrap peg 26, I'm gonna go ahead and take my working yarn uh, and put it over the existing loop and knit off and then take it and tighten from behind tighten the stitch because I'm going to bring that working yarn back to the front and I'm going to knit off peg 26 two times and now I'm knitting flat so I'm in the opposite direction and I'm using the you I'm sorry the flat version of the knit stitch so basically you just take the working yarn and place it loosely over the existing loop and knit off. And again, this is the flat version. So um, just put it over the existing loop, take the bottom loop over the top and knit off until you get back to peg one. And once you knit off peg one, you are done with your cast on and we're ready for the next part, which here is going to be that double rib stitch which is the top of your pocket. And for that pattern, you're gonna do a knit two, purl two until the last two stitches, and then you're going to knit two. Personally, I'm going to skip the first peg and move on to the second. You can knit both stitches if you wanna do that. You can do both knit. But again, when I start a row, I will always slip that first stitch and then go on to the next peg where I'm gonna do a purl stitch. And for the purl stitch, right, which is the next peg, I'm gonna take the working yarn and put it under the existing loop from the top. I'm going to scoop up the working yarn to create a new loop, right? Take off the existing loop off the peg, put the new loop on, and pull the string to tighten that stitch. All right, we're gonna continue with that pattern. Again, it is a knit two, purl two, and so I wrap those two pegs. I'm not gonna knit off right now. I'll come back and knit off later and move on to my purl stitch. So here's one of two purl stitches, and I'm gonna go to my next one and purl. And then, again, we're still repeating that knit two, purl two pattern which is going to give us the double rib stitch, which is the top of the pocket. All right, that's what we're knitting. And then we end with two knit stitches, which are the last two, right? Peg 24, I'm sorry, peg 25 and 26. And now I'm going to knit off. So all of those stitches that I wrapped and left without the knit off, that's what I'm gonna do now on my way back and once I finish doing that that was my row one I'm gonna come back to peg 26 remember I skipped the first peg and then I'm gonna start the pattern again because I need eight rows of the knit two purl two until the last stitches last two stitches and then knit two so you continue this pattern for eight rows in total 
Okay, so I failed to mention that we're using the E-wrap version of the knit stitch at this point. So completely wrap your pegs and when you're ready, you're going to knit off. Now after uh, two or three rows, you can take the knot off the anchor peg because your yarn is secure and you don't need to have it anymore. All right, keep knitting, you need eight rows. Once you're done with those eight rows, you're now ready for the next part of the pocket where we're gonna do a double seed stitch pattern. And this pattern is actually made up of four rows. And we're gonna start with the first two, which are rows nine and 10. And for those rows, you're going to do a purl two, knit two until the last two stitches where you'll do two purl stitches. So remember that I'm skipping that first peg, you don't have to. And then what you're doing is reversing that stitch pattern. So everywhere you did a knit, you're gonna do a purl, and everywhere you did a purl, you're going to do a knit. All right, so let's start with those two purl stitches, one of which I'm slipping. So I'm only going to do one purl stitch right here. I hope that's not too confusing. It's basically an option. You can do two purl stitches if you want, or in my case, I'm slipping that first stitch and doing the second purl, and that's gonna be followed by two knit stitches. Again, I just wrap my pegs and then go on to my two purl stitches. I'm gonna come back later and knit off those E-wrap knit stitches. I just find that it goes faster. You can wrap and then knit off immediately if that's what you wanna do. All right, so two purls, two knits. You end the row with two purl stitches and then you're ready to knit off those E-wrap knit stitches, right? And then remember that you're doing rows nine and 10, right? So you knit off those E-wraps and then you come back to peg uh, 26 and you're gonna do the same thing. You're going to do two purl stitches. I'm slipping my first stitch so I don't knit peg 26. I did uh, 25 and then two E-wraps and then two purl stitches. So I'm now on row 10 where I am doing the purl to knit to until the end of the row. And on my last two pegs, I will do two purl stitches. And once I am done with row 10, I'm now ready for rows 11 and 12 where my pattern now flips and I do a knit two, purl two until the last two stitches and then I'm gonna do two E-wrap knit stitches. All right, so I skipped that first knit stitch like I have always done and wrap the next one and then go right to my two purl stitches to follow that knit two, purl two pattern, right? All right, so I'm gonna take this moment and say thank you to Carol Maple from PromiseLearningATL.com, Clarissa Roby Hands, and Penny Pitchard for covering the cost of closed captioning. If you don't see the closed captioning yet, just come back. There may be a bit of a delay for this video. All right, so we're going to continue uh, and finish this row and then come back to do row 12 and I want you to keep in mind that if we happen to be on different ends of the loom um, when we start a row don't panic it's not that important that we're on the same side it's not that kind of project so if at some point I say we're on you know row whatever and we're on opposite sides that's not that important so don't overthink this pattern it's pretty simple and it doesn't have to be exact. You and I don't have to be exact. All right, so after you finish row 12, all you're gonna do is repeat rows nine through 12 eight more times. So you're gonna do rows nine, 10, 11, and 12 in that manner, uh, in that sequence, eight more times, and that's gonna give you a total of 44 rows including your previous uh, rib, double rib stitch, 
right? So with the rib stitch and the double seat stitch, you're gonna have a total of 44 rows. Now we're gonna move on to the biggest portion of the pattern and that is the garter stitch. Now usually a garter stitch is made up of a row of knits and a row of pearls, but this time for row 45 and 46, you're going to do two rows of knit stitch first. So just knit the row. Still skipping that first peg and still using the E-wrap version of the knit stitch, you're basically just going to wrap all your pegs, right? Or you can wrap a few and then knit off or wrap the row and then knit off. That's the way I do it. I find that it goes faster. It may seem a little looser, but I prefer to do it this way. Either way is fine. As you guys continue to knit your two rows of knit stitches, remember row 45 and 46, I'm going to take this moment to stop and say thank you to Lorena Reese for her continued support of this channel. Gracias, hermanita. All right, so finish up your row, right? And then we're going to move to row 47, which is super easy. It's just a row of the pearl stitch. All right, so here I skipped that first one, and then I'm just going to purl, right? I'm going to purl 25 because I slip my first stitch, but you can purl all 26 of your pegs. Once you're done knitting that row of pearls, the next step is going to be to knit rows 45 through 47 114 more times, and that's going to give you a total of 389 rows. Now, you don't have to knit that many rows. If you want, you can make yours shorter. In my case, I wanted an oversized scarf, so that's why I knit that many rows. Now it's time to work on the second pocket, and so we're going on the reverse. This time, we're gonna start with the double seat stitch, and you guys remember this pattern. For rows 390 through 391, your pattern is going to be a purl to knit two until the last two stitches, which you will do two purls. As always, I'm going to skip that first purl, do the second one, and then my two knit stitches, and continue with the purl to knit two pattern for rows 390 through 391 remember that for me it's you know this long because that's how much length I want it for mine so your number might be different from my number if you decided to make your scarf shorter all right so do those two rows and then we're ready for 92 and 93 Row 392 and 393 are basically the flip side of the previous two uh, rows so this time you're going to knit two purl two until the last two stitches and then you're going to knit those last two you guys already know i'm going to skip the first one and then um which was a knit stitch right so i wrapped and then kept going to do my two purl stitches and then i'm going to wrap those next two pegs for that e-wrap knit stitch and then move on to the purl stitch so these two rows are exactly the same once you finish um, 392, 393 is the same pattern. Knit two, purl two until the last two stitches and then those last two, you will do two knit stitches and don't forget to knit off before you start a new row. The next step of course is to repeat rows 390 through 393 eight more times for a total of 425 rows and then you're ready for the next step where you're going to do your double rib stitch which is the top of your pocket and 
again you guys are familiar with this stitch pattern as well you're going to do um, eight rows of this rib stitch where you're doing a knit two purl two to the last two stitches and then you're going to knit those two last stitches we'll take a quick look at what that looks like right rows 426 through 433 but you guys are basically experts so i'm not going to drag it just remember knit two purl two until the last two and then you're going to knit two and then you're ready for the best part which is the cast off and we're going to be using the super stretchy bind off all right let's begin by taking the working yarn and basically go through the 26 pegs two times right with that working yarn plus a few extra pegs this is going to give you a long enough tail to work the bind off so cut your yarn after you feel like you have enough of a tail and you can get either uh, a needle or your um, hook or however works best for you uh, in my case I'm gonna go ahead and just for an economy of tools I'm gonna go ahead and use my hook so I'm gonna start by putting my working yarn under the existing loop and take my hook from the top and scoop up the working yarn and feed it through that loop then I'm going to skip the next peg which is 25 and go to 24 this technique is actually worked over three pegs so as we bind off a peg we go to the next three and the next three and that's how you progress through all of your pegs all right so we uh, skipped 25 and went to 24 put the yarn above the existing loop and with your hook from the bottom scoop down and feed the working yarn through that loop and then you're going to take the working yarn back to the peg that you skipped put your hook from the top and your working yarn under the existing loop scoop up and feed it through that peg and keep your yarn always tight and remove the loop off peg 26 and then tighten the loop and removing that yarn is what allows you to keep things tight because you want this bind off to look nice and neat at this point this peg now has been completed the bind off is done and now we're working with these three pegs here so we start the process again your loop is now on peg 25 right and this is the peg you're going to skip which is the middle one and go to the next one that follows and from the top the bottom you're going to scoop down the working yarn always keep it tight and then go to the peg that you skipped and from the top you're going to scoop up that working yarn and feed it through the loop then you're going to go back to the last peg which is peg 25 and you're going to take the loop off and that completes your bind off on that peg which means you've finished two pegs all right so now you have three new pegs this is the peg that has the source right it's your where your working yarn is you're going to skip the next one and then go to the third that's the one you're skipping right there you're going to go to the next one put the yarn over the existing loop and from the bottom scoop down and feed the loop through feed the working yarn through that loop go back to the peg that you skipped put the hook from the top and scoop up and feed the yarn through and then tighten again always keeping your stitch tight because you want the bind off to look nice and neat and then take the loop off that last peg and now you have three new ones right here right so your source peg the one you're going to skip and the third and you're going to scoop from the bottom down and feed it through go back to the peg that you skipped with the hook from the top scoop up the working yarn and feed it through that loop tighten your work go back and take the loop off that third peg and again you have three new working pegs right here one two three where you're going to do the whole process 
all over again. You're always working with three. And basically what you're doing is a circle. I don't know if you noticed that. You're taking the yarn from the top down and then bringing it from the bottom up, right? It's a circular um, technique that you're doing in this bind off. Now you're done to, down to two pegs. You just take the yarn from the top, scoop down, and then take it back to the peg that you skipped from the bottom, scoop up. And then you're gonna take that working yarn back to peg one. You can remove this loop right here. Take it back to peg one. Put the yarn on the top of that last loop and your hook from the bottom, scoop down. And now you can remove your work off the loom and you are done you need to stretch um, all of these stitches don't worry about that Lucy um, loop right there because anyway you're gonna sew that in and you'll never see it so be sure to stretch your stitches really good and in fact you can uh, block the project uh, which would help how your stitches look right don't worry about this and by the way I'm going to be um, tightening the cast on stitches these can also be uh, tightened, and I'll put a link in the description on how to tighten the loose loops. All right, guys, we're ready for the next part. So here's my completed scarf, and I've tightened the edges, and now I just wanna make sure I'm on the right side of the fabric. This side, even though it looks fine, it's the garter stitch side, it is the wrong side of it. So I'm turning it over, and then I'm gonna get some kind of pin these are locking stitch markers which work like plastic safety pins and take the edges and fold them up and you'll see right here where there's like a line that's created when you change the stitch the stitches uh, you see that the texture is different then just take your safety pin and put it on the very edge and attach the sides right with the safety pin because you want to make sure that you have your pockets in place when you're ready to sew and so that's why I'm using these plastic safety pins it just makes it so much easier and then just sew your sides all right let me show you um, how we're gonna do that it's gonna look like this when you're done so you're gonna need to do of course both edges of your scarf so here you see where it's folded and you can tell the difference in the texture of the fabric so that you know where your pocket needs to start and then I've placed two of the locking stitch markers in place to help me um, keep the fabric where it needs to be when I sew and I'm gonna use a metal needle plastic is fine metal is just better and then I've taken uh, the same yarn and I'm going to measure out three times the length of my pockets with my yarn to make sure I have a long enough tail. In fact, I'm even giving myself some extra and then just cut it and go ahead and thread your needle. Again, any needle is going to work. I just prefer this one. And then I'm going to take the needle and feed it through the very edge where the pocket begins uh, only because uh, that's basically the bottom part of your pocket. So I start by feeding it through the uh, inside and then back again as you can see and now I have two sides where I can create a knot and I'm going to... Um, I'm going to secure this with two knots just to make sure that it's in place and it's it's not going to go anywhere. It's more like a 
mental thing and then don't worry about it it's inside the pocket and it's not going to show you can weave it in later and then start from the very edge of that fold and start sewing and you want to go up and then to the side as you can see here I'm going through the loops on the edges so here's my loop I, you see I went side to side and then I'm gonna go up right to the next loop and then go over and feed it through and it's like feeding it through four strands of yarn is what it looks like because it's two loops and then these little knots here there from the uh, purl stitches those work really well to secure your yarn when you feed it through it just it works so much better than the other one and I'm sorry it's a little blurry there we go all right so I'm going up and over with my needle and yarn and I'm going to do the same thing here up and over and I'm making use of those little knots that hold your yarn really good when you're sewing um, they just make it so much easier and again that's why I put a purl stitch at the end of uh, that knitted row that purl purl row uh, because that little knot right there makes um, holds on to your yarn a lot better than those loose loops it's like an extra security. So up and over, and then up and over. And this is just one side of one pocket. So you have two sides on each pocket. So you're gonna sew four sides, right? Two sides for each pocket. Which is why um, you can create this uh, project in just one piece. That's what I love about it. You didn't have to knit a scarf and then separately knit two pockets. It's all, you know, one piece that you just fold up and then you sew the sides. And you see that the sewing uh, is not any kind of expert sewing. It's very, very basic. And I would say anyone can handle this. This is not, I hate saying rocket science. I don't know. It's not difficult. You can handle it. I know you can, I got faith in you. All right, so we're here at the edge of that first uh, side, right? And you're gonna pay really good attention to this tip right here because uh, it takes most of the stress. When you put your hands in these pockets, that top part is gonna get most of the stress. So you wanna make sure that you sew that nicely and um, this is where you're going to weave in your ends. Well, this edge. This is where you're going to weave it in. So I go back in and I'm, I sew in a downward direction, which is opposite to the way that I, I started my sewing. And you see that it's on the outside. It really doesn't matter. You do want to finish, though, on the inside of the project. So now I'm taking it in the opposite direction and what I'm doing right now basically is weaving in uh, this end so that I can hide it. And you see that I'm, I'm making sure that that top portion has a, enough yarn on it. And then I'm gonna make a knot. You can use whatever knot works for you. This one works for me. And that's it and then I'm just gonna sew the other um, the other three sides basically the other side of this pocket and then the other two sides of the other one and and that's it and your pockets are done and you see that it looks really good it looks like part of the knitting it doesn't look like you sewed on a pocket and I think it looks really good there you go finish the other sides and then show me on Instagram what you did by tagging me or on Facebook, or wherever you put your pictures. I hope you like this project. I thought it was super cool. I totally love it, and I can't wait to see all the colors. Now, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and even more important, remember to share. And look at the description where I'm gonna give you lots of links and lots of information. All right, Luma, until next time.